Okay, hello everyone. I'm Sylvain Bobo, working for, for Red Hat. Uh, and I'm replacing my colleague that was supposed to do the presentation. And today we're going to talk about Skydive. Um, last, last year we did a presentation about Skydive, so I don't know how many of you saw the presentation. Did someone? No? Okay, okay. <laughs> one person. Okay, so what is Skydive? Skydive is a, is a real-time real network topology uh, and protocol analyzer. So um, what it does, basically, it's, it, it creates, a, 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 it collects all the, uh, your network topology of your world infrastructure, and it allows you to, um, to do some, uh, some uh, traffic capture and to analyze the, the traffic. So the reason why, why we, we started this project is that uh, networ networking is obviously very complex. Uh, um, for example, right now you could have like a, on, your, on your cloud, you could have like an open stack, and on top of this you can have a Kubernetes, each one with, the, with a different SDN, so you, you can the complexity is, uh, is huge. Um, it's, 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 it changes a lot. So basically, VMs and containers are created and deleted all the time. So it's it's very very dynamic. Um, there are there, they often you make use of uh, tunneling. Uh, tunneling. So you have like uh, VXLAN, GRE, uh, GNV stuff. So so it it can make troubleshooting um, complicated, and. Yeah, and that's that's the main use case for Skydive, which is troubleshooting. And there was a, a, a complete lack of open source tooling for troubleshooting. You you were basically stuck uh, stuck with the IP NetNS, TCP dump, and all the the the, the usual tool, toolbox. But that's not enough. So our goal was to do to design a, uh, um, a software that is agnostic to to the SDN. So so and in not SDN but any platform. So we are not tied to OpenStack, but we we can work with it. We we are not tied to Kubernetes, but same. Um, we want to to be able to do this uh, this uh, troubleshooting and this analysis in real time, but also to be able to do this uh, in a, as a post mortem uh, stuff. So for example, basically a, a user created a VM. He was he had connectivity issues. He deleted everything. And so, so we we had to find a way to be able to go back in time and and to and to see what happened. So, and we wanted to, something very uh, lightweight, uh, easy to deploy, uh, because if you have a, a, an issue in production, you don't want to 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 deploy uh, uh, a very complex uh, software. So it's a single binary. You put it on the machines, and and you're good to go, basically. Uh, so, uh, Skydive re can really be seen as a toolbox. So there, you can you can, you can use it in every way you want. But one very often used uh, 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 use case is the, the just the visualization, just to be able to see what's what's in your infrastructure. So you, you can see well, you can barely see here, here, but. The, that's the, the your network topology. The, so here you can see, for example, a top of rack switch. And on each part of this top of rack switch, there is a machine, and in the different nodes and stuff, it's, it's, there are the, the inter physical interfaces, uh, the network time spaces, the OV, uh, open V switch bridges, stuff like that. So, and you can, of course, you can zoom, you can zoom out, you can restrict the view because it can be huge on your infrastructure. You can click on, click on every node and get information, so uh, precise information, the MTU, the, the names of the containers and stuff. Um, so another stuff you can do with Skydive is uh, um, capture traffic to, to, to be able to troubleshoot. So on this, on this screenshot here, you can see the the node on the left, the yellow one. So this one is uh, we are capturing the traffic on this node, and when you click on this node, you can get all the flows. So the, that's that's the, the the arrays at the at the right. So you can see the different TCP TCP flows with the with the source IP and destination IP, and you can even have more information in a specific node. So you can see that we. We we look at the link layer, the network layer, the application layer. We get the metrics, so we see the number of packets, number of bytes that were for this flow, 
uh, the start and the stop. We can we also measure the, the RTT. Um, so different information on the flow. Uh, we also compute something uh, that can in, that is useful, which is the tracking ID. So for example, if you have two VMs talking on SSH uh, together, um, well, the, the the traffic goes on 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 different interfaces, and sometimes there are tunneling, so the the traffic can be uh, encapsulated. So we compute uh, what we call a tracking ID. Which allows us to to follow the, this this SSH traffic on all uh, on all the nodes of your infrastructure. So, so if you on the um, we selected one one flow and and all the yellow uh, nodes where the interfaces where this traffic was seen. Um, as we collect all the metrics for the the interfaces metrics and the flow metrics, we are able to. To, to to graph them, so we have we we developed a, a Grafana plugin for this. Uh, it's available um, directly from your Grafana installation. It's I think it's a Graf uh, the, the Grafana marketplace, something like this. And here you can this this plugin directly talks to the Skydive API, and you can draw. Um, uh, like, like the bandwidth for for a specific uh, sp for a specific VM or for a user or your of your cloud or, or whatever you want. Um, so that's, that's a demo of Skydive, which is it's in action. Um, so here you have the well, yeah, it's a pretty uh, huge infrastructure. So the yellow part is the top of rack switch and all the all the other nodes, and so you can. Expand different, uh, uh, like, like in this case, it's the namespace, and you can create the capture. So for the capture, you select one node, uh, one source node, and the destination, and it will create, it will capture the traffic on on the path between those two interfaces. We created an I, uh, ICMP uh, with a BPF filter. So that's it, and then we can also uh, inject traffic. Um, so we use the same mechanism. You select nodes and stuff. So that's okay. So now a very short um, slide on the architecture, very very top level. At, at the at the center of Skydive, it is, is there is a graph engine. No, so um, uh, basically, the we create nodes and edges, and we and we put, store the in, uh, information on the nodes on, as metadata. Um, and as I said, uh, as we want to do the post-mortem analysis, every, every change on this graph is archived, so we are able to create to 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 recreate the graph uh, as it was at a specific uh, point of time. So, like two years ago, what was my interf uh, how was my uh, network topology? And so this graph uh, is uh, populated by probes, and we will see uh, we'll see more later. And so um, the way you interact and you get information from this graph is uh, using the, um, uh, the API, and, and this API is, um, is serving is, a, is a accepting a, a syntax which is called the, the Gremlin language. The Gremlin language is a, is a graph traversal language, and so it looks like uh, like what you see on the top. So it, here it's a very very basic uh, uh, query that we do on the command line. We just ask Skydive the nodes that are named that have that have a specific name. So for this case, it was my my Ethernet interface, and so it gives you um, all the nodes uh, that match uh, as a JSON. As JSON. And so if you go back to the example, the use case I showed you uh, before. Uh, so with the tracking, so the the, the, the traffic where the, uh, my flow, my SSH traffic was seen uh, on the on on white, there is the the Gremlin query corresponding to this. So we identified a, a flow, we we got the, the trafficking ID of this flow, and then we ask Skydive the nodes uh, that have seen this uh, this flow. And well, same for same for the Grafana. Grafana, the Grafana plugin accepts Gremlin query. So basically, what you can graph anything that that you want. So here we are we are graphing the IC, the, the ICMP v4 traffic, uh, and we are aggregating all the flows. 
So now a, a more a precise uh, architecture uh, slide. So, so we have two two components in skydives. The first, uh, what you see on the left, which is the what we call the agent. Basically, it has to be started on all the machines of your infrastructure, so your compute nodes or your Kubernetes nodes. And so, so those they have uh, their probes and they collect their local in, uh, topology and they send this topology to one or more analyzers, which so aggregate, aggregates all those those local graphs and, big, and and creates a big graph with it, and it serves the API and the web UI and it stores everything in a in a database. So it's it's pretty common design. Uh, and uh, in our case, we support a. Uh, Elastic search mainly, and so um, so on the agents. What's where do we get the information from? So first we 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 talk to to the Netlink, so it gives us information about the inter uh, the interfaces. We also talk to ETH tool to get uh, to know what the the features that are supported by uh, by this interface or this card. Um, we also collect all the, the network namespaces that are uh, that exist on this node. Uh, we talk to the OpenV switch using the, the OVSDB protocol. Uh, we talk to Docker, uh, to Kubernetes, to Neutron, and, and so on, and even socket info, uh, sockets, which is a probe that, that we'll describe later. So, so that's uh, now we are going to see what. What's new since the since last year? Because basically that's what we ha we already had last last year. So we we added a way to 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 capture traffic using the DPDK. So for our high performance uh, use cases, uh, we are now able to to capture traffic on OVS. So uh, we were able to to capture traffic on OVS, but on the whole bridge now we are going to you, you can you can capture only the traffic for a specific port. Um, we fetch the routing, uh, the routing tables, the RP tables uh, for for the nodes. So uh, we we work closely with the IBM team, uh, and they, we worked on adding support for the power architectures. So so this is available for open for OpenStack, and uh, you also have the Docker uh, image in uh, for the power architecture. Um, we also have um, improvements on the deployment side of Skydive. We we have a nice uh, Ansible library to to deploy uh, to to deploy on your infrastructure. Uh, we, there is also the, a blog post which describes how to install a Skydive and and makes use of the um, Ansible network uh, stuff so that you can get information for uh, using LLDP about your switch. So your sky uh, your your Skydive is poli uh, populated with the your your switches, for instance, um, and we have well, it's not very very sexy, but uh, airbag mechanism. Um, so that's another feature we have uh, since last year is uh, workflows. So basically, if you we skydive, if you, um, typical stuff that you want to do is to check the connectivity between two two machines. Basically, what you would do, you would uh, select the node, you would create, uh, capture the traffic on the right uh, points of your infrastructure, you will generate some traffic, and then you will query the Gremlin, uh, the, the, the Gremlin API to see if the flow that you, created, you, you injected was, uh, was seen properly. So, so the workflow is basically a way to, uh, to automate those, uh, those actions. Uh, it's, the bad side is that it's JavaScript. You have to write it in JavaScript. But uh, the nice thing is that you can run it uh, almost everywhere. You can run it in your browser. You can run it as a separate uh, Node.js program. So, so if you want to, uh, you have a separate uh, system interacting with Skydive. And you can also, there is a JavaScript uh, engine embedded into Skydive. So you can uh, have Skydive execute your, your workflows. So, and you have a, once you create a, a workflow, it will appear in the web UI, and you you can have a nice way to trigger and the, your workflows. Um, what's, uh, we also have uh, a new Kubernetes probe uh, that was created like, uh, a, f a few months ago. 
Um, so it's uh, still an early stage of, the, of, of this probe. Um, it's basically synchronized um, the, the, the Kubernetes resources and put them into the, the skydive uh, graph. Um, so we support many uh, resor uh, Kubernetes resources, the namespace, the service, the pods, the, and some others. Uh, what we do, we simply uh, importing these re resources is not enough. We, we create links between those, uh, th those resources. So for example, you can have uh, uh, what pod are part of, uh, of, a, of a service, or you can see uh, the network policy, so which pod uh, this network ap policy applies to. And, and you can also go down to the, f uh, so that, that's the application uh, layer, uh, obviously. Uh, but you can also go down to the physical uh, uh, layer, so you can get uh, your service, then your pod, then your uh, Linux, con then your Docker container, and then your uh, VTH and your Linux namespace, and even the so down to the to the machine. Uh, so it's pretty easy to de to to deploy Skydive using uh, on on your Kubernetes. Uh, it makes use of daemon set, so it will run on all your all your nodes. Uh, there is also a Helm chart uh, which is available. And so that's what it looks like uh, here. So it's pretty messy, but you can see the here the, there is the the, the a mini cube, and then the service and the pods. And on the right side there are there are links to to the to the to the to the physical machine and its Docker containers. Um, what's new? Uh, we also have a, a, a way to, to capture traffic using eBPF. So uh, last year we, we had the PCAP, uh, IF packet, and OVS. Uh, but uh, for, for better performance, we, we created this probe. So it's, it's separated in two parts, uh, the, the, kernel, uh, the kernel space and user space. Uh, so the kernel space, obviously, is where the eBPF uh, bytecode runs. Um, so it atta it's attached on a on, on a socket, and then so we get the the, the ASCII buff from the from the kernel, and we create a um, uh, we a, a small a flow table uh, on the kernel side, um, and for also so when we see a packet, we we try to to, to find which uh, which flow it maps to. So we we compute a, a session key, which is basically. Um, uh, ash of all the all the the layers we saw in the in the packet, and we also maintain the the counters, so we are uh, we are able to to give you metrics about uh, on the, on those flows, and periodically uh, this flow table on the kernel side is synchronized with the user, with the user space side, and when you do, we do this, we compute a few stuff, a few more stuff like UID tracking ID, and then we are able to do the, the mapping between the topo uh, between the topology. So how to do this? It's very easy. You just there, that's another capture type. So you just select this. Uh, this is the um, uh, well a part of of, the, of this this probe. It's really 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 simple. It's, it's uh, 300. 300 lines of uh, of C, so it's it's uh, it's really tiny, and then at the end we can see that we compute the hash using uh, the FN FNV hash function. So really really simple stuff. Um, so regarding the performances, so um, it's like it's a bit comparing uh, like comparing apples and oranges, but I, we, I'm going to do this. Uh, why? Because it's uh, the eBPF uh, capture, uh, uh, the flow probe is not a complete, uh, feature complete. Is there is no support for tunneling, no TCP reassembly, no IPv4 defragmentation. So it's, it's still a work in progress. Um, and it's pretty, it's, it's not very easy to, 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 to measure the performance as this does, does not account for, uh, as the skydive process. Um, so this is a, this this summarizes a bit um, the, the the pros and cons for, for different capture types. So for IF packets, uh, you have basically a support for every, for every kernel. You, the, but the, ho the the overhead is huge, and, but there is no limitation. We support all the scale, uh, the, the features uh, the scale features are supported with IF packets. 
Um, there is, it's not really a capture type, but we have VPF, uh, so we can, you can restrict the amount of traffic you want just by specifying B BPF filters. So this way, uh, you can, you don't have every, everything, so you have no packet metrics and stuff, but still you, you can do very uh, useful, uh, useful things. And then you have eBPF, uh, but you have a, to use a recent kernel. The overhead is really, really small, but no classification. So um, if we do, this is not really, uh, it's really a small, uh, small benchmark. Um, so we are, we are using iPerf. Uh, Skydive was pinned on just one core, and so. Uh, if we generated uh, traffic we're using and uh, with a capture with the packet at four uh, gigabytes, uh, it's, uh, start, we, we, we started to saw packet drops. Uh, so if we uh, specify a BPF filter, uh, so I did not put a filter, but it's on only specific flags of the TC, uh, TCP flags, we were able to, to capture and analyze uh, 15 gig, uh, gigabits. And on eBPF, it was 2027. 20, Basically, the, the, the overhead of it, as we, what we do is really, really simple. It's, uh, there is almost no, no overhead. So one, one bottleneck was the, the way we, when we ask Skydive the flows and it, it returns the flows, it was uh, returning the flows as JSON objects and the serialization was just killing it. So, so, um, so what we did was we switched from JSON to protobuf uh, over web, uh, over WebSocket, and that reduced uh, a lot, a lot the, the time, the, the query time. Uh, another use of eBPF in Skydive is that uh, what we call the socket info. So basically, we want to see uh, which uh, which process is talking to uh, to which process, and or what container is talking to and uh, which container. And so it's to mimic the, 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 the it's the equivalent of, of the SS command. And so, so far to do this, uh, first we, we used a, a slash proc uh, parsing, which is was unbelievable. And so we found this very nice uh, nice library, with, uh, which is a TCP tra tracer BPF, which makes use of BPF eBPF to do this. And um, and we integrated it as a probe in Skydive, so we put uh, the, on as metadata as metadata on the host. We we have a list of all the sockets uh, uh, active, so who's listening, who uh, who's connecting to who, and um, we can you can write uh, Gremlin queries, so we can ask which host is hosting uh, the the, t the HTTPD, uh, HTTPD uh, process. We can see. We can ask who's talking to the 10 0, 0, 0, 10 uh, address uh, on the on the HTTPS uh, port, well, and you can also when you when you select flows, uh, you can also go back to the sockets that that generated uh, those flows. So. So with this, we have uh, you can we can. Show you a nice view of uh, of, of of the of, of the flow mat what we call the flow matrix so you can see the nodes are the it's it's an it's in an open stack deployment so you can see which process is talking to who so neutron dhcp which which is going to talking to ovsdb and and stuff um now for the roadmap um we plan to to do uh, to to add a hybrid capture so what we mean by hybrid capture we want to to capture the uh, only the, fir the 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 first the first packet, uh, so to to do the to do a huge analysis, so we look at the DHCP uh, even the application layer. So what's what's inside this uh, this this packet, and then for the for for the other packets, we we can do just lightweight uh, capture with eBPF. We don't have to to an to do a full analysis of of, of all the packets. Um, and we want to use uh, we, want to, we want to increase the use of eBPF because we right now the way we, we retrieve the network namespaces is just by passing slash broke, and so we are not notified of new of, uh, of new network namespaces. Uh, and we want to see we are investigating about using eBPF to be able to 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 get uh, retransmission counters from the from the Linux stack. Um, 
And so um, another thing we, do, we did this la last year is that we, we thought that maybe it could be uh, useful for some projects to have a, a graph engine. So it's, uh, as I said, it's uh, we, with a full story. So we extracted this from Skydive to create a, a dedicated component, which is called Steffi. That gives us a nice joke, and uh, and you can integrate it uh, in, in in your tool. And there is uh, also an LLDP probe, which is uh, just on being developed right now. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions. What is LLDB? LLDP, it's link uh, it's to be able to, to discover the topology. So basically, your switch sends, sends packets every, every second to give you. And so just on your machine, you can, you can, you can know uh, if you are uh, on this specific switch and on what part of this switch and the, 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 the link and the, the speed of the link on those information. It's to be. To, to, Discover the topology. So, yeah. No, was that Hi. Um, it, is there anything specific required to uh, run on Kubernetes? Is it tested across different um, providers, or is it expected to just work? I see. Expected to just work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you mean by, by providers? You mean? Uh, so yeah, it it works on OpenShift maybe because we uh, yeah we, we we test it. Uh, so yeah, basically it's, it's supposed to work. Okay, thank you very much.